Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna cover lesson 1, external financial reporting, and section 1 is about financial accounting. Alright, so just to provide you an overview, here is the outline of this lesson. So first, I'm gonna talk about the general purpose financial statements. Second, I'm gonna discuss the users of financial statements. Next, I'm gonna discuss about the features of financial statements. And fourth, the accrual basis of accounting, and lastly, the cash basis of accounting. Alright, so now let's proceed to the first topic, general purpose financial statements. So what is the objective of the general purpose financial statements? Basically, the objective is to provide financial information about a reporting entity that is useful in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. In other words, the general purpose financial statements is relevant since it provides financial information that are necessary to the users of financial statements like the investors, creditors, and so on, so that these users can make informed decisions about the entity. So later, I'm gonna dive deep into the classifications of the users of the financial statements. So the information provided is about these three things. First, economic resources, in other words, assets. Second, claims to the entity or liabilities. And third, the changes in those resources and claims or simply the equity. I'm also going to discuss to you the accounting equation which is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. So let me discuss to you in layman's terms about the accounting equation. So as you can see, this equation has two sides, the left side and the right side. Under the left side, it is simply the assets. And on the right side, we have two liabilities and equity. Now for the assets, for instance, if a company is operating in a retail industry, a company has certain assets like the cash in bank. For example, if the company is collecting from its customers in cash basis. So other examples of assets include trade receivables. For instance, if the retail company is providing goods or services to its customers on credit. Another asset is other receivables. So it can be from employees and other resources. And for retail company, uh, the company may also have inventories like the goods which the company is selling, uh, land and building, for instance if the company has its own land and building, property, plant and equipment if the company has certain equipment from its stores, and so on. Now for liabilities, common liabilities of a retail company include trade accounts payable since most of the goods the company is selling or purchased from the suppliers, which are more often than not on credit. Another example is salaries payable. So for instance, uh, the company usually has employees, so salaries and wages are sometimes paid uh, at the end of the month, hence the company recognizes salaries payable. Another example is income tax payable. And another example as well, if the company has loans, then it may have loans payable. Now for the equity, it includes the share capital or simply the investment from the owners and the accumulated retained earnings, for instance, the income or loss during the year and from prior years. Alright. So now let's proceed to the users of the financial statements. So users of the financial statements may be classified into external users and internal users. Now for external users, so basically external users are people who are outside of the business who use accounting information. So for instance, we have suppliers, investors, potential investors, creditors, financial advisors and analysts, stock exchanges, regulatory agencies, and tax authorities. For instance, suppliers or person in business that provide products or services to the entity. Investors and potential investors, so they need information, financial information to be specific, to decide whether to provide resources to the entity. Creditors need information to decide whether to lend money to the entity. Financial advisors and analysts in stock exchanges need information to decide whether to invest in the company. 
and regulatory agencies and tax authorities need financial statements or financial information to ensure whether the company is paying the correct amount of taxes and whether the company is compliant with other reportorial requirements. Now, for internal users, these are people within the business entity or organization who use the accounting information. So, for example, we have the management, the owners, and the employees. So, the managers are the primary users of the financial statements because they need the information to do their job. So, they have to make decisions such as whether to add debt or how to maintain cash flow. As such, the financial statements are very, very critical. Owners, on the other hand, can use the statements to evaluate whether their investment is safe and whether the company is providing an acceptable return on their money. Now, for employees, some employees such as accountants or the finance department are also users of financial statements because it is simply part of their job. So, if other employees have access to the information, for instance, if the company is not a publicly listed company, it can help them judge whether the firm is in good shape or whether it is time for them to jump ship. Alright? So again, still in the users of financial statements, we can also classify users according to their interest. So, users can have direct interest. So, for instance, these are the investors, potential investors, suppliers, creditors, employees, and management. On the other hand, users can also have indirect interest. These include the financial advisors, analysts, stock market exchanges, and regulatory authorities. Now, what's the difference? Basically, users with direct interest usually invest in or manage the business. So you can see uh, we have here investors, financial investors, employees, and management. On the other hand, users with indirect interest usually advise, influence, or represent users with direct interests. So now let's proceed to the features of the financial statements. So as mentioned earlier in the objective, the financial statements, it is used as a primary means of communicating financial information to external parties. Further, notes the financial statements are considered part of the basic financial statements. So we have here the full set of financial statements. First is the statement of financial position or the balance sheet which shows the statement of financial position as at end of the period or as at the period. Second, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or simply income statement. So other comprehensive income are those items of income and expenses that are not recognized in profit or loss in accordance with the IFRS standards. Third, we have the statement of changes in equity. And fourth, the statement of cash flows. And lastly, we have the notes to the financial statements, which comprise a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory information. Now let's talk about the two methods of accounting. We have first the accrual basis of accounting. So the general concept of accrual accounting is that economic events are recognized by matching revenues to expenses or simply the matching principle at the time when the transaction occurs rather than when payment is made or received. Again, so for instance, for revenues, revenues are recognized in the period in which they were earned even if the cash will be received in the future period. On the other hand, for expenses, expenses are recognized in the period in which they were incurred even if the cash will be paid in the future period. So for cash basis of accounting, the gist here is that cash accounting only records transaction when payment or collection occurs. So for instance, for revenues, revenues are recognized when cash is received. For expenses, expenses are recognized when cash is paid. So kindly note that under the general accepted accounting principles or GAAP, financial statements cannot be prepared under the cash basis of accounting. Now let's 
discuss an example of how to recognize revenue under the accrual basis of accounting and cash basis of accounting. So we have here a scenario. For instance, a service company provides a 5,000 US dollars worth of service to a client on October 30. The client makes a cash payment on November 25. Now, the recording of the revenue will differ if it is done under the accrual basis and if it is done under the cash basis of accounting. So for accrual basis of accounting, revenue is recognized on October 25 when the service is rendered. On the other hand, under cash basis of accounting, revenue is recognized on November 25 when cash is received. So I hope that is clear. I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. Comment below if you have questions or clarifications and I will answer them. And in my succeeding videos, I'm going to discuss the other topics and I'm going to cover part 1 of the CMA exam. So if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel as I will be posting tutorials in my succeeding videos. My name is Jane. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Oh, <laughs>